Hello. You know, I am all about what? Delicious comfort food. I'm all about recipes of things that when I was growing up that mom made, grandma made, but I'm also about updating them. So this is a delicious butterscotch pie. Now I am someone that is obsessed with butterscotch flavors. And really what does it come from when you make a pie? A pudding. So really all we're doing is making a butterscotch pudding. There's a few little bit extra steps. Pudding to me was just when we were growing up, if mom had milk that, you know, she thought was maybe on the verge of going to be going bad soon when she wanted to use it up, she made pudding. And that was always the best day because we often did not get pudding otherwise, but homemade pudding, why would you ever not have it? It's, it's worth it. It's worth the calories once in a while. So what we're gonna do is make a butterscotch pudding, which is really a lot like the other puddings we would make growing up with a little bit extra flavor. So to start, to get that good butterscotch flavor, I'm gonna actually melt some sugar, caramelize it, get it nice and dark amber, and that's what's gonna give you those flavors of butterscotch. So in a kettle here, I'm gonna just heat it over kind of a medium, medium low. I'm gonna put this sugar right on the bottom. You can see we're not doing a ton of sugar. It's just enough to give it the flavor we need. So I'm gonna slowly let that kind of just like melt on its own, just kind of shake it out into an even layer. And since it's such a small amount, it really won't take that long. While that's doing that, I always like to have everything ready when I'm gonna make a pudding. I like to have it ready to go, kind of get everything together. So I have my milk, my cream here. So at each stage, I am there. I'm using dark brown sugar, again, because it has those flavors in it. It has that molasses in it that's going to give it that deep, rounded, delicious, caramely flavor. So since I have all the components I need, I'm just going to put them into a little bit bigger bowl. Put that dark brown sugar, delicious, flour. So old time recipes, especially ones I'm going to say from the Midwest, they would often have things like flour used as a thickener when you're going to make a pudding. Often now we're going to have what? Maybe more of just like an egg yolk, cornstarch, whatever it is. I do actually like the flour in this case because it's gonna give you that right kind of thickness with the egg yolk that you need to put it into a pie shell. So I need this milk actually in the mixture later, but I'm gonna add some here just to kind of moisten this, kind of get it to a point where I can actually stir it together because that flour is gonna be really thick. And so you wanna get it enough so you can actually stir it, break up everything. And then into this, I'm also gonna add my egg yolks. They started breaking already. You know, sometimes they come out whole, sometimes they don't. So we're having pretty much a double thickening here. We have thickener from the actual egg yolk. We have it from the flour. So when you're making something like a pie, as opposed to just eating pudding on its own, it doesn't matter how thick it necessarily is. But in a pie, you want it to hold up and be thick enough so you can actually cut it and enjoy it. So into here, I have everything I need. I'm gonna try to scrape that out to get all that egg yolk goodness in there. That's ready to go. We're gonna let that sit. We're gonna go over, we're gonna watch our sugar. You can tell it's already melting. So when you see it around the edges starting to turn that amber, I'm just gonna kind of swirl the pan slightly. I don't necessarily need to stir it at this point. You just want it to heat a little bit evenly and kind of get it, because there could be hot spots. So I'm gonna let it heat evenly till it's amber all the way through, then we'll move on. So when it's getting dark, I pull it up and I just start turning the pan just to make sure it can go from dark to burn to smoking too quickly. So as you can see, it's that even kind of deep amber color. The dark color, while it's a little bit darker than caramel, that small amount is really gonna amplify all the flavor we need for a pie. So I have it off the heat here at the moment. I'm gonna add in the rest of my milk and it's gonna sputter at first, even though I have room temperature milk and it's gonna make that caramel harden which at first seems scary. I get that, it does. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna then put it back on low heat. And after a while here, it's gonna slowly kind of break down that caramel again and let it melt into the milk mixture. While it's doing that, I'm also gonna measure out my heavy cream. You need the richness, like don't, don't even think that you don't, you do. I'm gonna put that right in there too so it can be heating up with the milk and that caramel. And then once all that caramel melts back into the milk and cream, we'll be able to make the pudding. So I've been slowly stirring this and all of that caramel now on the bottom. So like when I just pull it to the side, you can see there's no caramel on the bottom. It's melted into that wonderful milk and cream mixture. So now all we need to do is get in and kind of thicken everything up. So I have my flour, 
eggs, that sugar mixture. Since the eggs are with the flour, with the sugar, it kind of helps stabilize them so you don't have to quite temper them like you usually would. So I'm just gonna slowly, quickly, I'm gonna be whisking this and then pour this in. And this is just kind of tempering my eggs in a quicker way as opposed to kind of putting a little bit of the liquid in. We're gonna just do that, that's perfect. And you can see there, at the moment, it's like, wait, this isn't thick at all. No, now we need to put it back on the heat. I like to scrape out all my bowls, that's what I do. I want all that egg yolk, I want all that goodness. I don't waste it. And I'm gonna bring this back to the heat, low heat, keep it whisking until it thickens up. So in a couple minutes, you're gonna see a delicious pudding. So as I've, just a, a few minutes here, you can tell it is extremely thick and that's what you want. See how it leaves those ribbons as I'm whisking it and it's really thick. You wanna cook it until it gets thick enough that it's holding its shape because guys, this is a pie. So when you cut a piece, you want it to be a piece of pie. You don't want it to just be a everywhere and be, you know, soft. No, 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 no. You want it to be pie. So we're just about there. I'm gonna just whisk it a little bit more. Again, the flour stabilizing it so the eggs aren't gonna just curdle. That flour is really gonna help it hold. And then we're gonna pull it off the heat. So right now that's good. We're gonna pull it off. We're gonna bring it over here. We're just gonna finish up with a few things. So a little bit of salt. Of course, vanilla. That's gonna bring out all the flavors. It's important. Even if it's heavy on the vanilla, that's even better. And then some butter. So butter, like with any pudding, just kind of gives it that that finishing kind of lush texture that you need. It gives it that flavor. It just really does kind of finish everything off. Oh, look, I wish, I know, I know I hate to say this every time. You know what I'm gonna say? I wish you could smell it. It's delicious. You get that, I think what it is amazing, you know, butterscotch is a flavor that often we only get really artificially in some type of candy. You know what I mean. Well, this is like a true, real butterscotch with that dark amber caramel as the base and then the brown sugar with the molasses notes. And now the vanilla is just kind of rounding it all out with the butter. So I'm gonna whisk it until it's all that butter's melted in. Then we're poured into our pie shell. So here I have my pie shell. I love my pie crust recipe. Use what works best for you, but what I like is it's just a delicious crust when it's baked on its own too. So I fully pre-baked this crust. It has a nice golden brown all on the bottom too. You do not want a soggy bottom. You don't want it par-baked, you want it fully baked. And you know, if you're brave, how to always tell if a crust is really well baked, if it can come out really easily from that pie shell. And you see that delicious golden color everywhere. You can tell it's flaky then you know it is baked well. So while this is warm, because you don't want it to set up right away, I'm gonna put that pudding in there. Look at that pudding. Oh, this is my favorite, because you just get that delicious. Now, I wanna leave, <laughs> you should put it all in there. I wanna leave a little bit for myself. So I'm just gonna, I'll put a little bit more in. Oh, this is what I love. Now, when you have a pudding like this, and if you do not want it to form a crust over the top, I don't use plastic wrap a lot, but while it's warm, put that plastic wrap directly on it, and then you won't get that skin on it. So just, you know, it will cut easier. It will just kind of not then have that skin for anyone to have to deal with. You know, even if you just make it and put it in a bowl of the pudding, and do this, the air won't get to it, and you won't get a skin. So now I'm gonna let it fully cool, then we're gonna top it. Oh, we're gonna eat pie. That's the best part. The butterscotch pie is pretty much cooled, so to finish it off, you could do just whipped cream. Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah, but I like a really good meringue on top because I think it is the most luscious, marshmallowy, creamy, like not too sweet, but just sweet enough topping, and I think it's needed. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, to make a really stable whip meringue, we're going to actually heat up the egg whites with the sugar, melt the sugar into it. You don't want any of that weeping that way, which is when meringue starts kind of exuding those liquids because it kind of just doesn't hold together well. Instead, we wanna make a very stable meringue. So in here I have my egg whites. 
This is just my mixing bowl that I'm gonna put on the electric mixer when I'm done. I'm gonna add my sugar, because you need that sweetness. Gonna add a little bit of salt. And then I'm just gonna take the whisk from my mixer, because why wouldn't you? Why mess anything more up? And I'm just gonna whisk this together until it is well mixed and then we're gonna go over the stove. So I have a bain-marie going, which means just a pot of hot water and I don't have it filled up enough that it's gonna to touch the bottom of my container. I just wanna be able to set my container on it. It has the hot water underneath that's gonna create the steam, it's not boiling. And what this does is it stabil stabilizes the egg whites without overcooking them. So we're gonna sit here and we're gonna let this bain-marie just kind of slowly heat the egg whites, melt the sugar until there's no grittiness. We're gonna, and then we'll have a stable meringue when we whip it up. So it's pretty simple. I'm gonna whisk it until it's melted and we'll whip it. So this has gotten warm and it has melted all that sugar in really the best way to check. <laughs> Not science here. You're just gonna take a couple fingers, feel it. And if you feel no grittiness from that sugar, you're good to go and it's all melted in and that's what you want. So at this moment, it doesn't look that great, does it? It just looks like this whitish, milkyish, kind of gross liquid. So we're gonna put in just a pinch of cream of tartar. Again, it just helps stabilize those egg whites, help them wick, whip up better. Now we're gonna put it on the electric mixer. It's just, you know, these make it easy. So we're gonna fit it on. And that's why I didn't dirty a whisk too, because I knew this was gonna get dirty anyway. If it's less dishes, always worth it. So we want this to get room, you know, completely cooled off, not be warm anymore, and whip up so it's just beautiful and lofty. So we're gonna let it whip slowly at first. I'm gonna turn it up and we'll put it on the pie. So you can see it's completely changed texture. It's marshmallowy, creamy. I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla because really there's not a lot of flavor there. There's just the sweetness. So we're gonna whip that in. It's flavored, super simple. So. This Swiss meringue, not only is it to me just, I think it's more delicious than like a traditional French meringue where you don't heat it up, but it gives you that texture that I just think you cannot beat, which really this is the base to one of my favorite frostings, a Swiss meringue buttercream, which then you would whip butter into it, but instead we're gonna use it in its meringue stage. So I just pulled the plastic off and you can see even the little parts where the plastic didn't touch, you can tell how it's different, that skin is on it. So. We're gonna take this beautiful silky meringue. I mean, really, it's like melted marshmallows. It's just, look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. And what I like is, I didn't go, um, you know, I went heavy on the meringue because I want the meringue. I love the meringue. I do, I just, oh. And I like it to just, just hit the sides. You can make it really lofty, which to me is like, what could be better than just a good, lofty, delicious pie. This is kind of like, you know, what you would do on a lemon meringue. So like any type of pudding pie, this would be delicious on, obviously. So what I'm gonna try to do now is just make some swoops. So I'm just gonna take the back of my spatula and just kind of make some peaks because those peaks, they're gonna turn brown when we kind of heat it up here and toast it. I always think this meringue is best if you can serve it a little bit more fresh. So I would make this, you know, soon before you're gonna serve it instead of not the day before. Meringue just always, its texture is gonna change. It's not gonna be the same. So look at those beautiful peaks and valleys and that's what you want. So I have the oven set on a low broil, which in my oven works. If you're a broiler you're uncertain of, just put it more at like a 325, 350 and watch it. I'm gonna put it under it just long enough so it just starts browning it. I'm gonna pull it out and we're gonna be happy. While that's happening, I'm gonna obviously clean off this. Seriously, it's marshmallow, it's just marshmallow. So there's the pie. I let it sit just a few minutes after I brought it out of the oven. You can see, I like it just to be beginnings of brown. Now, the hard part about meringue, it never cuts the perfect, like I like to have slight warm knife, a thin knife, a small, but guys, either way, you're gonna break that meringue and that's just okay. So we're gonna go all the way down. You have to go through a few layers here because we have all that meringue. You wanna get to the edges of the pie. And then I do like to wipe it off in between. I just think it can try to make a cleaner cut. Will it? Let's, you know, I'm not gonna promise here. But what I do love about this is, it's kind of a pie that you, it's a treat pie, which, okay, pie is kind of a treat, I guess we should say. But you know, you're not gonna get this pie all the time. This is probably one that maybe like, oh, back in the day you would've gotten out of like a church potluck that that one person always probably just made perfectly 
and oh, you all wanted, but you just didn't all get. Now, what I have to check is, did I get the crest? I don't think I, this is what you always have to check. Did you get all the way through the crest? No, I didn't. There it is. <laughs> but you could tell then, that was a good test. My crest was well baked, because did you see how it was all coming out? That is a well baked crust. So I'm cleaning that off again just to double check all my layers there. Make sure I have it cut there all the way through. I do, I always remember that with church potlucks. Like you always knew what certain people were gonna bring and that you want, oh, I know you don't see it because of the meringue, but let's just, oh, there it is. Oh yeah, there it is. Look at that butterscotch and you get it here in the pie too. Mm, you see it? all those beautiful layers. Now, this to me is the right ratio of Swiss meringue to pie. You get mm, maybe double the meringue. Meringue is so light and fluffy. It just goes and fills in all the cracks. You need it. Now let me just. Okay. This, this, do I have anything on my face? Do I? Okay. <laughs> this is like, this is the pie. It is, this is what I love. I love a good pudding pie, but not one that's just gross pudding. This pudding is like, this is a once in a lifetime perfect pudding. Not once in a lifetime, because you can make it now again and again. But it's butterscotch pudding. Not from a box. Don't even give me that, because that is nothing on this. This, you get those caramely notes. Like deep amber caramely notes with that butterscotch flavor that you just can't compare because it's not a fake butterscotch flavor. It's real. But then coupled with that light meringue topping, I never try to eat more than once on a video, but I'm going to. Um, this to me, this is what you want. Do you have a special occasion coming up? Make pie. Is it Tuesday night and you just want to feel something good? Make pie. Is it just a special week or not a special week? Make pie. It takes a couple steps but it's the best pie that you are gonna have here in a while, I think. So as always, what do I hope? I hope you guys share these videos around because it helps so many other people see them. And I just think it helps so many people see how fun it can be to do things in the kitchen. Bring it back into the kitchen, gather some family around, be by yourself, whatever you need, and just enjoy it. Make some good pie. Share the video, tag friends, share it to your wall, to your story. As always, check my website, wiseguy.com for this recipe and so many other great recipes. Until next time, I hope you have a reason or no reason at all and can enjoy some pie. That's the point.